The Federal Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices requires public agencies to use an assessment to maintain traffic sign retro reflectivity standards. One of these management methods is expected sign life, which can be based on sign retro reflectivity degradation. The Minnesota Local Road Research Board is funding a project to develop expected sign life values for traffic sign materials commonly used in Minnesota based upon retro reflectivity data collected in the field. The results will enable local agencies to manage their traffic sign assets better and decrease their costs through more efficient sign replacement strategies. Remember, always use proper safety equipment and procedures when working on the roadway. This video will show you how to properly gather that data by calibrating, using, and storing your Gamma 922 Portable Sign Retro Reflectometer. Always be careful not to touch the optical lens of the device at any time. First, make sure your battery is charged. Install it in the handle. Turn the power switch on. If outdoors, wait for the GPS to activate. The first touch screen to open is for taking measurements, but calibration of the device is essential to gather accurate data. Calibrate before each day's use. On the opening screen, press Return to Main to view the main menu. Choose the Calibrate Unit option. Remove the calibration standard card from its protective cover. Handle the card by its edges being careful not to touch either face of the card where it is measured. Verify that the calibration values and the serial number displayed on your screen match those on your calibration standard card. Place the black or zero side of the calibration standard card, pull the trigger until a beep sounds. Repeat these steps using the reflective side of the standard to complete the calibration. Put the calibration standard back in its protective cover and store it in the carrying case. The device is now ready to collect data. In the carrying case you'll find documents including a summary cheat sheet of the data collection process and the required retro reflectivity range for each sign color and sheeting type. These signs are examples of the sheeting types you'll be measuring for this project. They include HIP, VIP, and DG3. HIP sheeting has a pattern of small, six-sided shapes that look like a honeycomb. VIP sheeting has diamond shapes in its pattern with a flat, glossy surface. DG3 looks similar to VIP with a diamond-shaped pattern, but if you view it at the correct angle, you can see fine lines which look somewhat like parallel scratches across the surface. DG3 is also roughly twice as reflective as VIP, so the higher typical retro reflectivity values can also help you determine the sheeting type. Now that your calibration is checked, you are ready to take measurements. On the screen, press Return to Main and then press Begin Measurement. Make sure you have a notepad when you walk to the sign so you can record all necessary sign characteristics. Look for a barcode on the sign. If there isn't one, you'll have to enter a sign inventory number in the device after you're done taking measurements. This is the wrong way to scan the barcode because he's holding it against the sign. Keeping it a few inches away from the sticker and pulling the trigger activates the barcode reader. You should hear a beep and then see the barcode information on the screen. If it doesn't beep, reposition your device and try again. Now measure the retro reflectivity of the sign sheeting. Verify that the measurement mode of the gamma is background when measuring the background color and legend when measuring the lettering, numbering, etc. You'll take three measurements per test. For each one, hold the device against the sign, making sure to position the optical lens over only the one color being tested. 
pull and hold the trigger until you hear two beep sounds. If you're not getting beeps, the measurement failed, so reposition the device and try again. When you're done, the screen will show the three sample measurements and an average. Enter the sign inventory number in the comments section for each sign that did not have a barcode. For each sign tested, record the other sign characteristics needed for this project on your notepad. This information will be entered into the sign inventory database and merged with the retro reflectivity data later. Before downloading the data from the device, your computer must have the Gamma 922 interface software installed. If you have difficulty downloading, refer to the software instructions and if necessary, seek help from the manufacturer before proceeding. Follow these downloading steps in order because many steps are dependent on the preceding step. As always, keep fingers and objects away from the optical lens. First, verify the Gamma 922's power is off. Attach a USB download cable to the 922 and to the computer. Then turn on the 922's power. On the computer, open the Gamma 922 download interface software. At the upper left, click on File and select Download Data from 922. Click on the Save Formatted Data to File button. Select a folder in which to save the data and make sure to save it as a CSV file type. Now launch Microsoft Excel and open the CSV file. Save this file as an Excel spreadsheet to allow merging into the Sign Inventory Database and exporting. Proper cleaning and storage are important for a well-functioning retro reflectometer. Prepare a cleaning solution of water and mild dishwashing liquid. Dampen a soft cloth with it and wipe the Model 922 in a circular motion, making sure that the solution does not seep into any crevices. Remember, only the exterior surface of the device should be cleaned, not the optical lens. If the optical lens appears to need cleaning, or if the device is not operating properly, contact the materials lab for evaluation and assistance. When not in use, return the Gamma 922 to its original carrying case to protect it from damage, dust, and other potentially harmful conditions. More information about the Gamma 922 can be found in the user manual. Thank you for watching.